Hello again. So today I wanted to do a quick video about um, kind of expanding on GUIs for auto hotkeys and just some things and functions you can do with them and explain them in a little bit more detail. And uh, also just go over this smart GUI creator. This is such a great way to really make fast GUIs that look nice and clean without having to go through the actual code. It'll just generate the code for you. So definitely a lot better to do it this way. Um, you can just go, um, Google Smart GUI Creator, and you should be able to find it. It's a great program. use it all the time. Um, <clears throat> so in my last video, I kind of explained some very basics to this. Uh, I'll put the link in the comments below so you guys can find that if you want to start from the beginning. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to kind of run through these real quick, uh, just the features that you can create inside of a GUI. So you got some of the pretty basic ones, um, you know, a button that you want. Um, you also got a uh, checkbox, radio box. Uh, the difference between a checkbox and a radio box, uh, a checkbox, you can have multiple ones of them, and you can uh, check both of them if you want to have multiple ways to check stuff. But if you're just looking for, hey, I only want the user to have one option on uh, putting that in there, um, they can only click one of those at a time. So that way they're only able to select one option. So that's the big difference between those. Uh, text box, just, you know, if you want to type any type of text or have an input box for text. Um, uh, group box is kind of a cool way to make a nice clean uh, area. Um, it's a little hard to see, so I'm actually just going to go ahead and get rid of that grid. And uh, that just kind of divides up your GUI into sections that are very clear. Uh, I use these a lot just for uh, big forms that I need people to fill out and whatnot. Then we got picture. <clears throat> Pretty self-explanatory there, but I do have a screenshot I just took. And that just puts a picture, you know, wherever you want it. You can size it. Obviously, it'll get a little bit pixelated once you get bigger. You can do all that, you know, just to make it look pretty, I guess. <laughs> uh, Drop-down menus. Um, combo boxes where people can type in the text, kind of like a drop-down. Uh, list box. This is just a place where you can have a list. You can have multiple columns if you want to display multiple types of data in a row. Um, usually when you're doing these, you want to use some sort of like array. If you're saving the text somewhere on uh, your computer, like in a text file or an Excel file, definitely something to look into is um, using arrays with this. Uh, makes it a lot easier to um, display that information for you. Uh, date and time. If you need someone to select a calendar date, you know, hey, I have PTO on this day or whatever. Uh, monthly calendar. That's just a calendar. Can't really do much with it. Um, I usually just go with the date and time drop down. It's way better, I think. Uh, progress bar. Uh, let's say you need to fill 100 orders today. And every time an order is complete, you want to see how far you are. Uh, the progress bar, it's basically just a loading bar that uh, just can go up until it hits 100. And then it can reset, too, to back to zero. Uh, slider. Um, maybe you have, like, this uh, text set, you know, 1 through 100. And you kind of just slide through and be like, okay, I need 25. Honestly, with something like that, I prefer just to go with like a text box where someone can um, throw that in there instead and just be like, oh, I need 25. It's just an easier way, I think, to do it that way versus uh, the slider. <clears throat> hockey. Uh, if you want to display a hockey um, that's in your code, just sometimes uh, you have maybe a whole bunch of hockeys and you forget, you know, hey, what does Alt-A do again? Or what was uh, this function's hotkey? This will help you kind of remember as like a roadmap, I guess you could call it. Uh, tabs. Maybe you want multiple pages. So you can switch between different uh, pages here. You can add way more than just tab 1, tab 2. <clears throat> I think you can go as high as you want. Uh, the slider, up and down. This, I honestly, I've never used this. Um, just because most stuff, like the text field and stuff, will have this built into it. Um, so I don't really use this, to be honest, so I'm, I don't have much information about that. And uh, change font, 
maybe you just want to use a different type of font use some wing ding or whatever you can uh, change it so I'm gonna create a real basic GUI here real quick so then I can uh, show you the code and some of the options that you can do with it uh, we'll just put some random stuff up here real quick change the text just give me a second here <clears throat> now one thing to remember um, when you're creating this stuff uh, for example if I put an edit field here and then I put one here and let's put a third one the code gets created in the order that you make it so let's say for example I ac actually decide to move this down here if I'm up here and I'm gonna push tab it's actually going to jump down here just because that was the second menu that was created even though it's in the third spot it's going to jump there and then it's going to jump there um, so that's good to remember when you're creating something if you move something you might just want to um, go ahead and delete it and then just make a new one like that and now it should go in order <laughs> that's good if you need users to you know tab between stuff um, just remember that the code is generated in the order that it is, well, generated. <laughs> uh, let's uh, let's do a drop down, show you how some of that features work, and we'll just add a button or two. And like you said, like you saw there, I actually created this one first and that. So if I tab, it's gonna jump to that one first and then that one. But I'm okay with that for now. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the code. I can go to save as. I'm just going to save it to my clipboard. Don't need another file on my desktop. And there is my code. <clears throat> so as you see, we got my text, the edit field, the drop down, and the two buttons that I created. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and rename some of the buttons. Um, I'll just name this one exit. And this one could just be do something. So here's where we get to kind of add the functions that we want to have. Um, a good one to always put at the beginning of a GUI is destroy. The reason why is if I run this script, I push the exit button here, but then I decide, oh, I want to open this again. So I push F1. If this is not here, because you're opening the GUI for a second time, it's going to throw an error. So you need to make sure it gets destroyed each time it opens and then builds it. Um, you can also change the name here of what we want it to be. And I usually honestly delete this line of text. I don't really need it. So in order to move to um, have a button, you know, perform an act, um, function, you got to put a G for go and then uh, whatever you want it to, to be called. So I'll just say exit now. Yeah, I'll just actually put that there. <laughs> so if I push exit, it's just going to close out of my script for me. Um, you know, here I could do do something, go do something. And we could just say, you know, message box. I did something. So another one that's really uh, helpful is uh, I'm gonna spread this out. GUI always on top. That's gonna mean that whenever this GUI is open, it's going to take priority over any other window. So even if I'm actively in Chrome, I'm gonna still be able to see this GUI on top of Chrome. Um, another one we got is color. GUI color, and then you can just Google um, like the hex number or the HTML number, whatever you want to put here, and that's going to change the background. So right now you see it's kind of a I don't know what that's called a eggshell gray maybe I don't really know, but it changed this so I could have the whole background be orange if I really wanted it to stick out. You can do that. And another one we got is 
GUI minus caption. And what that's going to do is that's just going to get rid of the uh, toolbar basically at the top. Um, so right here where it has like the icon, GUI workspace, uh, minimize, maximize, and close, that won't be there. So be careful with this because if you do get rid of this, there's no way to close this out unless you actually add a button that when I press this, it would uh, basically just do a GUI destroy. So I could actually just throw this down here too instead of closing out my program. Um, because with this, I wouldn't be able to actually push that little X at the top because this wouldn't exist. Instead, I would have to push exit and that would go ahead and destroy the GUI for me. Uh, with edit fields, if you want to have a save, so when I push this and have it save, I want to have a variable here that this information right here is going to save to. So I'm going to do variable text box save will be it. So if I were to do that, um, I push save. I then want to have that variable displayed in a message box. But in order for that to happen, we need the GUI to actually submit. So we just do a GUI submit down here. Um, and this will do two things. It'll save any variables that need to be saved. So it would save whatever's typed into this uh, edit box. And it'll also hide this. Uh, it basically is kind of like a GUI destroy, but it saves the variables too. Um, so these kind of work the same way, except for one saves the variables and one just doesn't do anything but close out. So the variables, um, if you ever want the variable to be erased before the GUI opens, you can obviously up here, like when I push F1, I could just put GUI equals and then nothing. Um, as of right now, when I run this, I'm going to have the word edit there. I don't want that there, so I'm just going to delete it. Um, if I do want something there, I could always put um, the variable there in uh, percent signs like this. So basically the first time I run this script, there's no variable saved for this yet, so that field's going to be blank. But then I'm going to push save, it's going to submit, and then if I push F1 again, whatever I had typed in here the first time will actually uh, display there again, um, as long as this is not here. Because <laughs> this is just wiping it back out again, so I could always get rid of that, that way it always comes back again. Um, the last thing I've got to show you is the drop-down list. You know, how do you put the options you want in there? So I'm going to do option 1 and use the little straight line that's above the shift key there. And do option 2, option 3. And you can go as far as you want. Um, something I recommend uh, with drop-down list, always changing the height. I always just put like a high number in there, 900. Um, this would probably only be like maybe, f I don't know, 50 height normally. But if I put a higher number in there, it's just going to automatically cut out all the white space that would be in that height. So it's only going to really drop down to these three. But that way in the future, if I add more, I don't have to worry about changing the height. So it's always good to just throw that in there for you. All right. That's what I got for you today. Um, probably go into even more fancy stuff with uh, the GUI. Um, just because I really like making these a lot. And uh, there's a crazy amount of stuff you can actually do with these. Uh, I'll post some of this code down there in the comment section. Uh, just in case you want to Google. Uh, the Auto Hockey website is a great place to go. You can actually just Google AHK GUI. And it's going to have a lot of this information on there too. Uh, plus more, because there's probably 50 different things you can do with a GUI that are uh, pretty fun to mess around with. Alright, thank you guys. See ya.